Your priest, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear people of God, today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Bosco. And for us to celebrate in a world where this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for strength. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up the priest, St. John Bosco, as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. King David said to Joab and the leaders of the army who were with him, Tour all the tribes in Israel from Dan to Beersheba and register the people that I may know their number. Joab then reported to the king the number of people registered. In Israel, 800,000 men fit for military service. In Judah, 500,000. Afterward, however, David regretted numbering the people and said to the Lord, I have sinned grievously in what I have done. But now, Lord, forgive the guilt of your servant, for I have been very foolish. When David rose in the morning, the Lord had spoken to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I offer you three alternatives. Choose one of them and I will inflict it on you. Gad then went to David to inform him. He asked, do you want a three years famine to come upon your land or to flee your enemy three months while he pursues you or to have a three day pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what I must reply to him who sent me. David answered God, I am in very serious difficulty. Let us fall by the hand of God, for he is most merciful, but let me not fall by the hand of man. Thus David chose pestilence. Now it was the time of the wheat harvest when the plague broke among the people. The Lord sent out a pestilence over Israel from morning until the time appointed, and 70,000 of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. But when the angel stretched forth his hand, toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord regretted it, the Lord regretted the calamity and said to the angel causing the destruction among the people, enough now, stay your hand. The angel of the Lord was standing at the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel who was striking the people, he said to the Lord, it is I who have sinned. It is I, the shepherd, who have done wrong. But these are my sheep. What have they done? Punish me and my kindred. The word of the Lord. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Bless the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, and whose spirit there is no guile. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Then I acknowledge my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. 
I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in times of stress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. You are my shelter. From distress, you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, you will ring me around. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own king, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform many mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time, so today we celebrate a simple man of God, Saint Don Bosco, who learned to work with his hands. We are told that when he was a young guy, he learned carpentry, he learned baking and shoemaking and such stuff. And out of what he had from this trade, he was able to school to become a priest. And when growing up, he would gather young people around himself to preach the word of God to them. And that is what brought about the idea of oratory in the church, a place where we normally gather the young people to play and to pray. He brought about that understanding. And there is something particular about him. He wasn't like the St. Thomases, those brilliant people, the St. Augustines, those brilliant and elite saints. But he was one simple guy who, like I said, worked with his hands. Ordinary things that people hardly at times acknowledge or appreciate. But when the church accepted him, his style, and not restricting herself to the St. Thomases and St. Augustines, he was able to make so much impact on the church where he brought the young people closer to God. So the church, in a way, did not judge him by the identity, but the church was able to, if I may say, decipher what God was bringing through him from his identity or his person which in itself wasn't bad. And that is what we also see in the gospel of today. We are told that Jesus Christ went to his native place 
And when he went, he preached, did so many beautiful things that the people acknowledged. But when he acknowledged the beautiful things that Jesus Christ was doing, they were in a way blindfolded by the familiarity they had with him because they knew him as a carpenter. And so they asked themselves, can something good come from a carpenter? They weren't able to distinguish the identity of Jesus Christ from the message or the miracles, the beautiful things that God was accomplishing through him. And so we are told that Jesus wasn't able to do so many good things in his own place. And that is what I encourage us also to learn, that we also got to learn to not to restrict the value of a message to the messenger. Generally, though, the credibility of the message has a lot to do with the messenger, but it's not always the case. There are times that we can gain a lot from the message without allowing the messenger to blind us or to restrict us. For instance, you may be old, you may be aged, but a young kid can just say something or advise you that if you are to take without considering his or her age, you may realize how impactful that will be to you. Someone who is not your mother or your father or your sibling may advise you, but without you saying that, who are you? You are not my mother, you are not my father, you are not my sibling to advise me. If you are to take the message without considering the messenger, you may be surprised how that may come a long way to impact on you. Someone who in a way probably isn't married, may advise you when it comes to marriage life. But if you are to restrict yourself to the fact that the person isn't married, so probably has no experience to advise you on marriage life, you may lose a lot. It goes a long way to our workplaces. It goes a long way to where we live, their church, and what have you. Not all priests, or not only priests can advise. Even the lay people can also advise. We are encouraged today by the life of St. John Bosco and also the gospel today that most of the time the credibility or the identity of the messenger has a lot to do with the message. But at times also there is the need to distinguish the messenger from the message. May God bless us. The Lord is kind and merciful. Let us offer him our prayers with confidence for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. May God empower all who are called to respond with joy. And for all in public authority, may God free them from pride and the love of power, inspiring them in the ways of servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who grieve the loss of a loved one, may God bring them consolation and hope. And for this family of faith, nourished by the Eucharist, may Christ lead us to follow him ever more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died, may God grant them a place at his heavenly banquet, glorifying him together with the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let us put our various intentions before God. Lord, your grace is sufficient for our needs. 
Please answer our prayers this day according to your holy will. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that it may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this one we offer you. Fruit of divine and work of human hands, that it may become for us our spiritual friend. Pray, my dear people of God, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on the altar in commemoration of Blessed John Bosco, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. John Bosco, you obey your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending now your spirit upon them like they do for so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sending, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Lord, cross and resurrection. 
we have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously granted a peace and unity in accordance with your will, your holy and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Blessed is this servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase friends from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed John Bosco, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation he prays for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Amen. Prayer of Pope Leo XIII to St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, Jesus Christ, precious by his blood, and to aid us in our resources, with his power and strength, we thank the almost watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, almost holy one, from flight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, when there's conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you want to save the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a righteous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do that.